Welcome to our follower drive time. In this video, I want to show you how to tune such a motion controller out of our second generation of motion controllers. And I'm still using here the small integrated one, so the 2232BX4. The single encoder that is used here is the integrated linear hall sensors. And in the first video, I already set up and uh, established communication using the small demo unit here. In this video, I'm going to use the RS-232 version of this driver, but uh, the steps would be identical when using the Kenopen version. So that's it for now. Let's switch to the view of the motion manager and tune speed and position loop. So here's once again the view of the motion manager. All control loops have already been preset when stepping through the uh, motor selection wizard. But after the drive has been built into the application, we can now do kind of a fine tuning of the control loop and adapt the tuning to your application. And the tool that's going to be used here is the controller tuning window here. Let's have it a little bit bigger here. And there are two steps. First is the velocity loop. So um, I test the setting of the velocity loop by applying steps for the speed. And I have to do the steps somewhere in the middle range of what the drive is capable of. In that case, the maximum speed is the 5000 here. So I'm using 1000 because then it's easier to interpret whatever overshoots I am going to have. To do this, have to enter these two values. Uh, so I'm stepping from zero to 1000 and have to enable the loop explicitly and select whether I want to do this once or continuously. It depends, of course, on your application. Here with the free moving disk, I can do these steps continuously. So let's start this. And then, of course, I get a warning. Um, and uh, the warning here is that now, of course, the settings are immediately transferred to the driver. And so I have to make sure that uh, it can move. So then I OK this message here. I shouldn't get it again. And the drive is starting moving. And here on the right side, the green line is the target speed and the red one is the actual speed. And down here, I can use the slider to increase or uh, decrease the gain of the speed loop. And when I start doing this, then I once again get a warning here. Uh, that I shouldn't overdo because then the drive could get instable. So um, once again, check this one and then the warning shouldn't show up again. And let's try where we can end up. Um, my drive um, is a little slow here because I'm doing all the screen capturing in parallel here. So uh, if you want to have a faster reaction of the motion manager, don't do capturing, but do it yourself and try. So uh, for a servo drive, a single overshoot for in the speed loop would have been fine, but I don't see one here, so that's okay. Next one would then be to switch to the position loop here and again apply steps. And uh, these are relative steps, so starting from where I am. And then let's use one turn of the motor. And for this second generation of drivers, we calculate 3000 increments out of the linear hall signals. So 3000 would be one turn. And again, I can do this either in a single step or continuously. Um, now let's use the single step for a change and do a first one here. Okay. And get a question whether I should move back to the initial position. Well, uh, yes. And then increase the gain here and do it once again. So increasing the gain might increase the robustness against whatever disturbance we would have or uh, decrease the gain here uh, to try to get rid of the overshoot. An alternative way to deal with the overshoot would be reducing the deceleration parameter, but that's not accessible here in, in this tool here. So uh, here is what I can do, uh, change the gain here. In the end, there's a third 
tab here, which allows me to compare the different results if I do have different results, because then I can switch between the, the uh, uh, different takes here and select the one where I want the parameters to be downloaded to the drive. So I'm done here with the first steps, the tuning. I'm satisfied having a slow overshoot here and then can disable my drive here and uh, close the tool. For further tests, I would now use the motion cockpit out of uh, the quick start selection here. So that's here and I can place the cockpit anywhere, but I usually do it in the lower section of the node explorer here. And the next tool would be the gra graphical analysis here. With the graphical analysis and the RS-232 version of our second generation, I can have a maximum of two values to be displayed. And uh, there's a fixed list of available values. Here it's the position and the velocity that would be displayed. So I can start capturing the values here and now use the cockpit to switch on the drive here and uh, then move between two different speeds. Let's have it a slow one here and do this repeatedly. And uh, you can see the drive moving forward clockwise and then stopping once again. And in the graphical analysis, you see the actual speed and the position is increasing here. So let's stop this here. Um, I can, of course, also use position control or a direct amplifier mode, voltage mode, where no control loop is active at all. While doing so, I can still tune the loops uh, because uh, what I can use is an additional tool here, and that's a small one, the control parameters window here, um, where I do have a direct access to all of the parameters of the control loops, well, the important ones, and uh, can change them and any changes are uh, taken immediately. So uh, for the speed loop, it would be the POR value, and I can now reduce that one, let's say do this significantly and apply some steps here. Uh, so run this repeatedly. Uh, and then you can see with changing the gain here, um, the disturbance of the speed was increased. So motion cockpit, graphical analysis and the control parameters uh, window here. And the last one that we would use would be the drive functions window, which is then used uh, to more or less have access to all of the parameters uh, that you want to adapt to your application. So here the operating mode that's actually used and then some very specific parameters here when using um, uh, discrete references like an analog target speed or an analog target position or even using uh, quadrature signals uh, to command the position. Here the tab is for the control parameters. Uh, important might be here you do have the uh, settings for the current limits here and then the last one is to configure all the IOs. Uh, so uh, how to use the digital inputs and what the digital output is used for. So these are all the tools that we do have available for our second generation of drivers here. They are slightly different for the Canopen version, but the general concept is the same here. So this was about tuning such a second generation motion controller, here the small integrated one and an overview over the tools that we can use in the Motion Manager to tune and change the configuration. I think we are set here. And of course, for any additional questions, don't hesitate to ask our local sales team or our MC support team. Thanks for watching. And as always, check back with our channel. You might as well leave a comment down here and bye.